Usability One's a top tier digital research consultancy, and we work with our clients in a way to try and reshape the way in which digital connects with people. So what we do essentially is carry out specific research to provide the customer insight that drives design. So we work with clients through the development life cycle to ensure that they're developing products and services that, that best meet organisational as well as customer needs and ensure that they're following a process that maximises the opportunity, particularly with retailers, of maximising ROI through conversions, through customer engagement, through strong branding, and uh, making sure that they're, they're really meeting their, their potential. With online, uh, it tends to be we serve it through internet panels. Okay. So we we'll go out and source particular samples through the panel. Okay. So the, the beauty of that is that we can be really defined mm -hmm. and say that we can recruit on basically any demographic, firmographic feature we, we choose to. Yep. Um, and then say, well, we want that particular target group and we can compare the, the results from, from different audience groups yep. in a quantitative sense. Okay. Moderated usability testing is really a qualitative technique where we tend to bring a small number of participants to, um, to our labs and get them to carry out tasks on the website. The, the bonus of unmoderated usability, or sorry, the bonus of moderated usability testing is that you can actually delve very, very deeply into discussion with participants, get them to carry out a whole suite of tasks mm -hmm. and have a length of time, a period of time of between 60 and 90 minutes with each participant. Mm -hmm. They're very, it's a very flexible approach, so if they find and uncover an issue or an opportunity, we can go down that path and explore it with them. Um, also explore alternatives mm -hmm. during the session. And it also enables the clients and designers to be actively involved in the process with us so they can see firsthand what's happening live. The moderator can come in and out of the viewing room and talk to them during the process so that we can further expand and explore specific issues. But it tends to be a small qualitative sample. The unmoderated or online testing tends to be a much larger sample. So again, we'll use internet panels to serve the, 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 the test and go out to actually get people to carry out testing with us in their own environment. So whether that's at home, at their, at their desk at home, or whether it's at, at work or, or wherever they choose to, to take the test. You know, mobile, if they're on a tram or a train on, on a mobile application, do a lot of that testing as well. We see um, online and unmoderated usability testing as fulfilling a need of providing more quantitative research testing. Yep. So we often use them in we often use online in conjunction with the moderated usability testing. Mm -hmm. So what, what that might be is that when we're looking at trying to test an interface, whether it be a mobile phone application or a website, and we want to try to understand how different target groups will use the interface. Um, but it will be just too cost prohibitive to test it with hundreds of people. Yeah. Using an online using online testing is a really good tool to be able to get to that larger sample set and be able to do it in a cost effective way. Typically, it's it's, it's around about a hundred to, to, to two hundred to three hundred to five hundred. So it just depends on on what we're exactly looking for. So we're running a project at the moment where we're looking at, at samples of tens of thousands. Uh, looking at individual areas of the country, both regional and city areas. Uh, so we, we've got the opportunity and the scope to look at some, some very broad samples. Yeah. And the benefit of this is often when we've run some qualitative testing up front in the lab, we might want to see, well, how does this particular demographic respond or how does this geographic location differ to this, to, to this particular location? Mm -hmm. Are we seeing variances here? Mm -hmm. And often that's a, a great a great tool to go back to stakeholders and, and show that we've we've had the rigour that sits behind the qualitative approach. Yeah. So rather than saying well, that's just a handful of users that you've spoken to, no, we're actually talking to a huge volume of, of users and we've been able to validate these assumptions quantitatively rather than just simply rely on, on a small sample of qualitative yeah. results. 
depending on the type of site. So for, for a retailer site, it could be a really content-rich site with lots of products. Mm -hmm. So the way in which customers will potentially look for those products might be, there's really two types of, of search behaviour. And mm -hmm. one is a navigating behaviour where people will simply navigate their way down through the different tiers of the site. Mm -hmm. And the other one is really a search-centric behaviour where customers will use an open text search to try and locate what they're looking for. Yeah. So retailers need to really get both running smoothly. Yeah. So if, if the information architecture is not intuitive, it's not going to be working for those navigation-oriented uh, users. Yeah. And if the site search isn't, using, isn't working as it should, well then those, those, site, those search centric customers will have trouble trying to locate what they're looking for. So mm -hmm. if you look at a site such as Amazon or iTunes for example, yeah. you're going to be getting very search centric behaviour on that site. Yeah. If you look at another website which might be say um, the Essendon Football Club which we worked with recently that have quite a lot of product but it tends to be allocated to specific categories such as jumpers or guernseys, um, memorabilia, DVDs, those sorts of things, we would tend to see on those sites that search wouldn't be so critical as, as on those really deep sites. Our position is the earlier we can work with them the better. So if they come to us with a finished design and want us to test it, uh, there's a little bit of heartbreak when we go back and say you've got to change a, a whole lot of stuff. But uh, if we can get to them at the, at the concept stage where maybe an online retailer is coming up with a new site design or they're looking and thinking about developing new components of, of their websites, yeah. um, that's a great point to, to run some research and get them on the right track from the word go. Okay. To understand their consumers, how they're consuming online, how they can best tailor and target their services to, to, to meet those needs. Okay. So that, that's the first component and then as we move through the design phases we look at structuring information and architecture. So making sure that the labelling, uh, the hierarchies and classification of content is intuitive. Mm -hmm. So when people are signposting their way through a website that they're taking the right turns. Yep. And uh, then once they're building the, the, the interface we go through iterative rounds of testing to again ensure that we're, or the, 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 the retailers are not making you know, incorrect assumptions and that they're basing all their development on, on the experiences of their customers.